What's up everyone, Steven here with TechMaker.tv. In this episode, we're gonna look at how to add breadcrumbs to a Ruby on Rails application. I'm working on building a note-taking app from scratch, and if you go over to TechMaker.tv, you can actually look and see the entire series from start to finish. Um, but in this episode, we're just gonna look at how to add simple breadcrumbs. So I've got this, um, app going on where we can create notebooks and then within each notebook we can add pages and we haven't added too many features yet we're still pretty early in the process but as you can see um, we've got these back buttons at the top of the page and it can get kind of weird when you go into a form and then you click cancel and then it kind of goes back to a strange place um, it's not always clear exactly uh, where you are and what you're gonna end up going to when you click on certain things so what I want to do is add a breadcrumbs bar at the top of the browser window here where we can actually always see exactly where we are and then if we want to go up a level we we'll just click on uh, the previous breadcrumb and we'll also probably need to rethink a little bit about how to handle these cancel buttons if we actually want to keep those um, and um, you know, maybe we'll do that in this episode, maybe in the next one. So I am using Bootstrap, so I'm going to go over to the Bootstrap website. And I'm just going to look up, actually I'm just going to search for Bootstrap breadcrumbs. And we'll go down and just copy something in here. So let's just get one that's maybe two levels deep, so that we have kind of a pattern here. Um, and let's go over to our application code and I'm gonna create a new file in the shared folder and we're gonna call it just breadcrumbs so I'm gonna say underscore breadcrumbs and we'll just paste this in here and if you watch this over on the website on techmaker.tv you'll be able to see the previous episode where we built all of this out from start to finish or at least where we are now and um, so you'll know a little more context about why my application layout looks kind of jacked up right now if I can find it um, but what we need to do in here is under the or just inside of our container I want to render the um, shared breadcrumbs and uh, if you are going along with the series we will clean this up in one of the coming episodes but for now we just need this so let's go over to our app and refresh now and we should have this nice breadcrumb bar so let's start by adding in some kind of hard-coded breadcrumbs and kind of see how we can make this work right so first of all we want the home page to actually go to the root path so just slash right that's fine we can leave that there but then everything after that we really need to be sort of dynamic or at least provided on an action basis so um, this can get kind of out of hand kind of quickly so let's look at let's start with um, my notebooks so I'm on the notebooks index page so right now I actually want this to say notebooks right so what we really want is let's just hard code one in and just say well in actual fact we can just change library to notebooks so now this is this looks right so so far so good now if we click into daily notes we would like this to change and say uh, the name of the note or the name of the notebook so we should have home and then notebooks should be an actual link and then we should have slash and then daily notes okay so how can we do that so we could come in here and say you know if um, if controller name equals uh, notebooks and action name equals index then we can do this else ok 
cannot type right now. Okay, and then otherwise we would like to actually, um, well in actual fact let's copy this one because it's more relevant to what we're trying to do. I gotta fix my syntax highlighting at some point. Um, otherwise we want to go to notebooks and say notebooks and then we're gonna want another one which is the active one now and this one should have the name of the uh, notebook dot title makes sense so then we can go over here and refresh and this is gonna look right However, if I click on notebooks, I'm going to get an error because now I don't have a notebook instance variable. So we could fix that, but you could probably guess that this is going to get out of control really quickly. So let's think of another way that we could do this. So I have an idea and I haven't actually pre-built this. Um, so we'll see how it turns out. But all of our controllers, and I'm trying to explain some of the basic concepts if you're new to Rails, but all of our controllers inherit from application controller. So what we could do is have a before action that's always run that is something like this. We'll say set, um, set breadcrumbs. Okay? And then we can write a method here that says set breadcrumbs, and then we'll say at breadcrumbs equals array. Some something like that. Really simple. And then we need to have something that's like a method that allows us to add breadcrumbs. So we could say def add breadcrumb. And then what I want to give it is a title. So what's the, or maybe a label, I don't know what the better name is there, but we have a label, we're going to have a path, and then I'm going to give it a, um, a third option, which is current, and I'm going to set this to false as a default. And then what I want to do is say, essentially, at breadcrumbs, and we're just going to append an object that is label, label, path, path, and then current, current. So this syntax right here with current equals false means that false is the default. And if I don't actually provide a third argument, then it's just going to assume false right here. So now let's go over to our pages controller. And let's go to our, excuse me, our um, notebooks controller. And what I'm going to do in here is I can call add breadcrumb, I think. So we'll call add, bread, add breadcrumb. And I'm going to do this at the end and say uh, notebooks. And then I'm going to give it a path of notebooks path this actually isn't really required notebooks path and then current should be true so maybe this should also be optional somehow uh, that's kind of an interesting thought I'm gonna leave it alone for now uh, but then let's go to our breadcrumbs and think about what we can do so we have an instance variable at breadcrumbs that's coming from our application controller so it's always available we always want to have the home go first, so I'm not even worried about that one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete all of the rest of this because it kind of doesn't make sense. So what we can do in here is say at breadcrumbs dot each do breadcrumb. Okay, and then we can say if breadcrumb current. else do something else and actually I'm just gonna undo really quick so I can see what I had pasted at the bottom down here so I want to grab this really quick and then put everything back how it was so if the breadcrumb is current 
again. I'm going to fix this later. Um, but what I want to do here is say, if the breadcrumb is current, just print out the... And in ERB, if you're not familiar, if you have this uh, less than percent without an equal sign, it does not print to the screen. And if you want to print to the screen, you need the equal sign. Just a little tip. Um, so we'll do breadcrumb, and then what do we call that? Label, like that. So let's refresh on our page here and see what we have. So we can see here that we have home and notebooks. Um, if we go to home, um, and again, if you want to know why this looks like this, you'll have to check out the actual series over on the website. Um, if we go to my notebooks, we get that. So what happens if we click on um, an individual notebook? So now we don't have anything. So really quick, let's go over here and let's add a breadcrumb. So we're going to want this on our show action also. And then we're going to want another one, which is going to be, so this is now false. So this is now... Uh, we're, we're not, this is no longer the current path, so we want to list this as false. And then this one should actually be at notebook.title. And then we can just say, um, I, I guess we can actually put nil here. We don't need to pass in a path because it's not linked. So we can actually go and do that. And then in our breadcrumbs, we can copy this line and we'll do this. We'll say breadcrumb item and then we can in here, let's go ahead and put this on a new line. I'm going to do the rails link to and then we'll say um, breadcrumb label and then breadcrumb path and then we need to give it a class so we'll say class is do I need to give it a class? I think I do, right? No, I don't actually need to give the link a class. So that's actually it. So we'll go ahead and uh, cut that line and let's see what we got. So let's refresh and now we have our uh, sort of dynamically generated paths here. So I want to do a quick refactoring because I have an idea and I just realized something. So over in our notebooks controller we have enough evidence now I think to kind of make this decision so you can see here that when we don't want to actually link we want to set it as current we're just passing in nil and then setting this to true there's actually more data than we really need what I want to do is just say notebooks like that and then down here I just want to say title and then here I don't actually want to have to pass in false I just want to pass in a path and to facilitate that so first of all, let's go ahead and change this up and let's say path equals nil. So if it's not given, if there's nothing said, so like right here, add breadcrumbs notebooks, or add breadcrumb notebooks, there's no path given. So we just want that to be automatically set to nil. And then we don't need this current variable anymore. And then down here, instead of saying if breadcrumb current, I want to say if breadcrumb path and to be more explicit, I'm going to say dot .present. And so then we just print out the label because we don't actually have a path and we don't need a path. And then down here, we're just making use of the label and the path. So that's going to simplify our code a little bit. And if I refresh, um, I did something backwards in the controller, it looks like. Um, add breadcrumb notebooks path daily notes. What's going on here? That's weird. So that works. And if I go there, now I'm getting something funny. So I added the add the breadcrumb notebooks title. No. If breadcrumb pre oh that should be blank. Um or nil if it's nil. Sorry, I did that logic backwards. Okay, now we're talking. Okay, so now this makes sense. <laughs> Sorry, confused myself. Okay, so if breadcrumb path is nil, then we do this. Otherwise, we print this out. All right, good. So I thought I was losing my mind for a second, but it turns out I'm probably mostly okay. So the next thing I want to do is start to kind of at least 
um, refactor this a little bit more before we end this episode just to kind of show you how you could think about um, not duplicating code all over the place because in actual fact every single one of these except well I guess it's really only uh, show new and edit are gonna want to have the breadcrumb notebooks added at the beginning so we could add a before action and then say something like add index breadcrumb and then we want to say something like only and then we'll say uh, show new and edit and then at the bottom we'll write a new method def show index or what did I call that add so that's add index breadcrumb and then in there we will say like that right okay so now if we get rid of that there if I go back over to my code and refresh and I click on view click on edit so you can see here that I still have my notebooks hanging around if I click on a new one okay so then I'm just gonna finish this up for this single controller and then in the next episode I'll add it for some of our other controllers and we'll also do some more styling cleanup in the next episode. So then in new, I'm going to add a breadcrumb. And it's going to say um, new. Right? So let's go check that out. So if I refresh here, so now it's notebooks new. Makes perfect sense. Don't need anything else. If I go to um, my edit page for like daily notes what should this one say so this one is a little bit interesting so we could do this we could say add breadcrumb and then add breadcrumb and then edit here so in actual fact that should be um, let's say that that is notebook path and then we'll pass in the notebook So now if I click here, it takes me there. I think that that probably needs to be that way. It's a bit weird because you can get there from the index page. You can click this and then go edit. But you can also get there from this page. So in a technical sense, it is deeper. Um, so I kind of like that. But anyway, so now we have a fully functional um, way to add breadcrumbs that we built from scratch so that's pretty cool so that's it for this episode if you like this video definitely give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already if you want to follow along with this series uh, in its entirety I'm posting a bunch of work sessions as I mentioned over on uh, techmaker.tv so you can go over there and register and then go through this all for free um, Otherwise, I'll be posting a handful of the episodes that we do that are on the shorter side or the more uh, sort of well-defined side. So where we're talking about a specific topic, I'll just be posting those directly on here. Um, but anyway, yeah, so in the next sort of work session, what I'm going to do is go through this, add the breadcrumbs for the rest of the uh, controllers that we've got and clean up the design just a little bit more. And then we're going to get into actually adding content to the to the pages in our notebooks. So that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll talk to you in the next episode.